Welcome to A Quest of a Lifetime on a Tale of Dungeons and Dragons. Last time our adventurers were faced with the Fortress of the Night's Ward, an accursed castle overrun with dark energy and littered with dead bodies everywhere. Our adventurers for this week are Brian the Half-Orc Barbarian, Carl the Human Fighter, Brandon the Human Cleric, Dave the Goliath Bloodhunter, and Greg the Storytelling Dungeon Master. Join us as they continue their perilous trek into the world of Dungeons and Dragons. For the group, we have a wonderful run into a corrupted fortress that used to be held by a, a knight's group that would, trans that would go across the land and collect all the dark and powerful evil items in the world and try to sh shuttle them away from society to keep it safe. But in this fortress, apparently one of these items had become opened and it has corrupted the entire place so this once noble location has been overrun with abyssal energy and transformative powers and the group is going to encounter all kinds of supernatural effects and maybe uh, some cursed items as well that may be laced about the entire fortress. So it's going to be interesting to see who acquires what particular items and what scenarios they run into tonight. Greg usually has something pretty creative. He either will do something that's solely uh, investigative in more of uh, a creative aspect where we have to figure out puzzles or talk to characters or he may go full monster clash mode where you have to just you know dungeon crawl and fight beasts and monsters and all sorts of things sometimes you change it up um, we really never know until we actually play it so it's always interesting he always is making stuff up on the fly so everything's really a surprise so hopefully, again, tonight will probably be a really interesting night. You're in the room on the far corner. And what we have are your characters all right in here where you just defeated a patch of brown mold, which seems to have sapped the life out of one of your players who is now dead. Beginning their adventure, the party decides to leave the lobby of the castle. Out of fear of the dead becoming reanimated, the lobby was the place of the previously burned bodies of the dead knights they came into contact with last time. Given two ways they can go, the party decides to take the hard left. And now, our adventurers come across a barracks full of dead bodies. Any of the bodies left in the oh barracks. no. It's spooky time. Carl, the human fighter, decides to do a room check, and after flipping over some of the mattresses, a giant spider leapt out to attack him. <laughs> yeah, I slowly put the bed back Just down. Just the bed. <laughs> no, not about this. After an easy fight, the party walks away uninjured, but decides to burn the remaining dead bodies of the soldiers they found in the room. Uh, there have been times when uh, bodies have been reanimated and we end up having to fight them. So anything that is a, a skeletal body or any body otherwise, we try and destroy as much as possible because we don't want to have to fight it again later. I swear, I swear. Mm. That would be hilarious, but no. Ah, I see where the problem comes from. <laughs> Guys, we want to take the spider out too. Yeah. I just take it off the side. Well, yeah, burn it well. Yeah, we can burn it, that's fine. I want to cut it on top of the curb. I personally wouldn't burn bodies because it's not really my job, but I don't see anything wrong with like uh, burning bodies for and like putting it in an urn and stuff like that. But I mean, there there is a bit of respect to those who passed, so I wouldn't necessarily uh, just burn a body without having known if they were someone who wanted to necessarily, I guess, go out that way. If that's the right way to word it. No, I would contact the authorities. After burning the corpses, they go back and find two wooden doors. Brian decides to barge through the left door without any second guesses. First person that goes up and tries it. Alright, I'm going up and trying the door. 
Oh. Moves up and the door. This is how he dies. Well, I wouldn't say that the character class is so much impulsive as I just played very impulsively. Um, that's kind of how barbarians are meant to be played. Through that door, they enter into what appears to be the lieutenant's quarters, where they find a key and a mysterious vase. It just looks like it was on the top. There was nothing... Good job. You broke it when you ripped it open. Yeah. There doesn't seem to be anything <laughs> of any great worth or anything to it. It's a little artistic in nature, but uh, if it had a value, the fracture has now made it uh, much less. I'm gonna leave it there. Okay. I wouldn't touch it either. It's too many things are cursed in this game, so I, I, I'm not gonna freaking go touch it either. It's if he wants to get cursed, that's his thing. But unless I have a good reason to uh, to touch it, I'm not gonna be touching it. After the party decided not to do anything with the unusual vase, Carl the human fighter flips the bed and a trap door is unveiled. Unlocking it, he finds a medallion for bravery, some personal items, and a diary. Personal nature. Open up the diary. Uh-huh. Uh, what language? Oh, that's there? rude. It's in common. Okay. According to the diary, the fortress used to be a place to test out artifacts and weapons. If they register as dark or corrupted, move onward to what the next board refers to as an obsidian pit, where they lock them away in a vault never to be seen again. Okay. Uh, so I want to pit at? I, I want to read the last, like... After finding the diary, the adventurers go towards the tower in search of the pit. However, they are ambushed by another spider. Oh, I got a two. My con is plus three. <laughs> About that. <laughs> Not quite enough, I'll put it up. Carl, <laughs> your body starts to feel sickened. You've acquired the poison condition. Uh, I think I'm gonna pour brandy on myself as a... <laughs> feeling That's poisoned? No, not on yourself, specifically on the wound. On the wound? <laughs> yeah. I don't wanna get poisoned at all. I tend to uh, screw up all my rolls, so. Anything that's poisonous, like spiders, I try and avoid if possible. Brandon's character is a cleric, so he kind of acts as our group's healer. You want to cast Healing Word? Yes. Okay. Roll a d4. Add your Wisdom modifier. It's just plus three. Uh, I can't see. I think it's three, so that's six. Okay, so I'm cool. Yep. Call your wound. Leaving the storage room, the party comes across what seems to be a mystical transportation portal. One person can move through this transporter at a time. Who wants to be the first guinea pig? I will. Okay, you will. Okay. Flash. You um, disappear. And I need you in the other room. He's dead. Um, sometimes I believe that Brian being so impulsive can benefit the group, but for the most part, because uh, he barely gets a character through session, uh, it may not help him. Um, I'm just hoping he's not dead, because if we follow him, uh, we might end up dead too. What winds up happening as you go into this room, you are bombarded with wave after wave of powerful force. It feels dark, it's energetic, and it just booms right into you. You go flying backwards and take 11 points of damage as you are blasted into a wall. After Brian rejoins the party, one by one, they venture through the portal where they are teleported into another chamber. But once there, they all get pinned to a wall by a mysterious force that seems to be coming from a dark vase in the middle of the room. From the vase, fiery red lettering can be seen swirling around the vessel. Carl, Brandon, and Dave, being the only adventurers able to reach the table, look upon the vase and begin to recite the incantation scribed upon it. Add ex, extium pluvium. I don't know what's going on with the enchanted phrases, but uh, I need to uh, figure out what they mean and and uh, say them to completion. Probably gonna regret this. Eat volcant. Okay. Eat phone home. Well, this is either going to be a blessing or it's going to be a curse. Finishing the incantation. The vase begins to erupt with fiery dark energy, and from it comes two horrific glowing eyes, and they land upon Brandon the Cleric. You hear dark, horrific, 
laughter echoing out from the fire. And he's like, <laughs> Free! And it blows through the ceiling and disappears. Oh, God. Um, that's bad. Our adventurers will have to find out what's in store for them next time on a tale of Dungeons and Dragons.